Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Mice T. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Alright. He came. He comes back with a mug already in hand. And I stashed away the box, so I won't be tempted to make more. And of course, you get to tell me what to do, so if you tell me to stop, I obey, okay? The power I have over him feels like a responsibility for the first time. Uh, okay, I'll make sure to keep you in line if anything happens. There isn't much left to do but wait the, but wait the time it takes for the tea to steep. The mug's filled to the brim, and any trembling will cause it to spill. He directs all his nervous energy to his other hand to compensate. We both know he's nervous, but neither of us say anything to psych him, to psych him out of it. After a few times checking the timer on his phone, the tea is ready. Well, that should, that should be it. He removes the tea bags and sets them down on a saucer. The steam rising from the mug looks like smoke from a chimney. His breath disturbs it like a gust of wind. He stares at the tea and prepares himself before glancing over at me. Well, to your recovery. He raises it and cheers before tossing his head back and drown and downing a big, a huge gulp. Just as fast, he lowers the mug, coughing and wiping his lips with the back of his thumb. Oh, fuck! He coughs a little more. That stuff packs a punch! It's great, but I can't believe you drank so much of something that strong! What do you mean? Just really potent tea. Wait, what does it taste like to you? Uh, gin, basically. Lots of juniper berries, and... He takes another swig and winces. Mmm! Pine needles, too. Also, there's this brisk, bright taste, like mountain air or something. Don't know what else... Don't know what make tea taste like that. That's not what I tasted. I tasted sweet berries and grass. Maybe some cotton, too. He raises the mug up to squint at its contents. A taste different depending on who's drinking it. Lends credence to Julie's theory that it turns people to different animals. He tips the mug upside down to empty the contents into his stomach. One way to find out! He sets the mug down out of my reach and shakes his hands nervously as if trying to flick drops of water off his fingers. Do you feel anything? Uh, definitely. My heart's beating a little stronger and my chest is kind of tight. Sort of feels like an intense caffeine rush. Do my pupils look dilated to you? He opens his eyes wider and stares straight at me. Oh, well, I don't know if I have, if I have a good idea of your regular pupil size. Fair enough. He stands there for a few moments more, bouncing on the balls of his feet in a way that would be more subtle at my, at my normal size. Don't know if I should be this nervous. It's okay. We've seen what can happen if you take too much. Don't worry, though. The transformation wasn't painful or anything. I mean, I was pretty drunk, but I'm fairly sure it didn't hurt. Oh, I uh, wasn't worried about that, that part so much. Uh, what about then? Gavin somehow looks even more antsy. Well, it's kind <clears> of... <throat> silly. Gavin, don't worry about that. You're doing such a big favor for me. You should be able to tell me any concerns you have. I don't know. Gavin, your mistress wants to know. He's exhausted all of his stalling tactics. Since you're... Uh, since I'm already gonna turn into something, I just... Uh, I wanted to be an animal that's, you know, cool. Hope you can hear the kindness in my laugh. Aw, that's so cute. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll turn into a very handsome otter or something. That very moment, I see something rise up from the top of Gavin's head. It's a shade darker and redder than his hair and rises like a blade of grass springing back up after being trampled. Only when it's fully upright do I notice what it is. Ooh, looks like I spoke too soon. Huh? Uh-oh. I don't know, what does he got? He grazes a few feathers with his fingertips, all of which spring back up when he removes his hand. Oh! It's soon joined by others that sprout from, the, from, the, from his scalp. Hmm. Most maintain that same earthy red, but a few white-tipped ones appear as well. He grazes a few with his fingertips, all of which spring back up when he removes his hand. Uh, oh, it is a bird! I think you mean you're a bird. More feathers sprout from his head. Streaks form, or form as rows of matching feathers appear, appear, appear one behind one another. So soon enough, anyway! Enough feathers have appeared that I notice his hair receding away, its place taken by his new plumage. His hair is kind enough to make its exit only after an adequate number of feathers prevent him from looking bald. Before long, only feathers are left to cover his head. They're swept back, affording him an aerodynamic appearance, but spits of upturned plumes maintain an echo of his normally spiked hair. It's like, you know, water time. Mm hmm. Mm. Delicious water. Okay. The streaks of white lend, lend him a distinguished salt and pepper hair. Salt and pepper air that outpaces his age. Do you feel alright? Yeah, I think so. It doesn't hurt, it's just wild. He runs his fingers through his feathers, leaving creases that are soon filled in by the smooth matrix of interlocking barbs. There's a subtle sheen to them, and the apartment and the apartment lights gleam off their surface as the feathers continue their crawl down his neck. It looks amazing! He looks away bashfully as a few feathers envelop his ear. You think so? 
Once they cover it entirely, the mound recedes until it's flush with the rest of his head. Yeah, uh, very dashing. He allows himself a grin as more feathers cover his face. It's good he took. It's good he takes the opportunity since he soon won't have the same control over his mouth. Oh. His lips take on a gray pallor and lose a measure of their softness. A stiffness draws itself across his lips like a zipper being shut. Uh, oh, what? Uh, I'm. Am I growing weak? He froze. His brow as a hard edge forms along his lips. It's sharp and points and and, the, and a point forms in the middle that gradually curves down into a hook. Oh crap! I'm having trouble with my fees and wees. My fees and wees. I chuckle, and Gavin loses some of the bravado afforded by my earlier compliments. The new edges of what were once his lips clack together, clack together against each other as he tries to work through a sentence. It doesn't get easier as his mouth presses outward. The top is large and round, engulfing his nose. It's soon absorbed into the growing solid mass of his new beak. The majority of it maintains that same silver-gray tinge. Further back, his nostrils settle in a band of pale yellow that marks the border between his beak and face. His plumage continues to spread across his chest and just below his sleeves the whole time his new beak grows. A patch of white feathers peeks out from his shirt collar and hints at the dappled chest underneath. Huh. Alright, well, he's a birdie. The hook of his beak curls down and back until it's pointing at his neck. His bottom jaw and remains of his chin are now totally enveloped by his upper beak. He presses in from both sides with his fingers as he tests the strength of his new appendage. Oh jeez, this feels weird! I think I can, uh, maybe squeak uh, if I... He tests his new range of emotion, have motion, and it appears as though he's yawning. The razor-sharp edges of his beak are in a resting sight. Whoa, 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 ball! Uh, feet are f wicked, uh, f a pack of pickled peppers! There, I think I got it! His smile is proud enough that I can see it in the corners of his lips. They're the only part left that has some range of emotion. Um, I'm gonna have to get used to this! He's still, he's still prodding his beak when the feathers start to crawling, start crawling further down his arms. It becomes a lot harder to investigate his features once pin feathers grow from his fingertips. One extends from each finger while a row running from his wrist to his elbow sprouts matching feathers as well. The shaft of each is thick, mostly opaque, and they extend out like spines. Shortly after they pass the skin, barbs unfurl and interlock to develop beautiful striped patterns. A white notch on each tip gives way to a brilliant, thick band of rich reddish brown. I'd seen raptor feathers before, but the size of Gavin makes his feathers even more striking. Wow, I can feel each feather growing! His tone makes it clear the sensation isn't unpleasant, and he raises and lowers his new wings to feel the air pass through his feathers. I take a step back to withstand the gust produced by the modest motion. My whiskers press flat against my face, and the whoosh fills my ears. As his wing feathers grow to full size, they overlap with each other to create a flexible, solid curtain that extends past his lips, past his hips. Gavin continues to flex his arms and fingers. There's barely an audible shuffling as his feathers rub against one another. It sounds like satin sheets pulled taut sliding past each other. Or at least what I imagined that would sound like. You look so beautiful! Oh, well, th thanks, um, mistress! He doesn't know quite what to do with his hands, or what remains of them. I can tell he still has his fingers by the way the last five feathers on each wing move independently, but they're fully incorporated into the slope of his wingspan. His whole countenance looks built for speed. Every surface sleek and aerodynamic. I wonder if you could fly like this? Oh, well, probably. Probably won't stay like this long enough to find out, but it feels like I could. Thank you, y'all. Water time. Alrighty. He allows himself another more resolute flap of his wings. This time my tail is picked up in the gust, and I have to shield my face with my arms. Once it passes, I hear a scraping from below. Oh, uh, those two, huh? I approach the edge of the desk and peer down. Gavin's feet are halfway transformed. His toes have already merged, and gray, scaly skin crawls up his foot and shin to just below his knees where his feathers have stopped growing. Oh, you don't need to watch. It's okay. I'm not grossed out or anything. His talons are already large enough for me to hear, and I watch them grow larger, blacker, and thicker into giant, curling crescents of keratin that scrape his hardwood floor. He awkwardly raises and lowers his feet while trying to maintain balance. Shit! Hope I don't scratch up my floor too much! He retreats to the rug that designates his living room while his feet continue transforming beneath him. The scales cover up, his, cover up his last few patches of human skin, and his toes plump into curved, grasping appendages that would serve him better if he were standing on a branch. His dagger-tipped talons flash in the lamplight. They're about as long and thick as my own body. For a moment, he just stands there, his head cocked as if attempting to hear something he's not sure, that he's not sure is there. Oh wow, yeah, he's a bird. After a few seconds, his wings droop down, though he still keeps them hovering near his waist. I think... I think that's it. He uses another moment or two to be sure. Yeah, I think I'm finished. He holds out his wings, careful to avoid folding them the wrong way. How does it look? Amazing! See, I knew you'd turn into a cool animal. 
How could such a handsome guy not help but turn into a, such an impressive hawk? Do you think I'm a hawk or a falcon or an eagle or something? He scratches the side of his head with his wrist. What do the feathers look like on my head? I might need to check it against some pics online. He reaches for his phone. His phone he set down on his desk. <laughs> it's a trying task. The feathers on his hands hit the surface of the table a second before they should and spread out across the desk. I have to back up as one slides over where I'm standing. His paw, he paws at his phone which stays flat on its back. Oh, um, maybe I can... He places his palm over the screen and tries to cup it. It's even less effective. I might have to slide it off and catch it with my... Gavin, just... Just let me do it. Uh, oh, uh, uh, okay. At least he managed to wake the screen up, and I await his passcode. Uh, 1129. Oh, your birthday. Oh, right, I didn't know you remembered that. I got you that nice gift last year, didn't I? I even had plans for something this year. I hopscotch my way across his passcode and open the browser before typing in hawk plumage. There's an array of raptors in the image results, and I step on a few of the sequence, a few, few in sequence to enlarge them. Some are close, though not many seem to have the same white highlights that Gavin's plumage does. Hmm, some of these are close. I'll save them for later. I hold my paw down to bring up the menu to save them to his files. Uh, try Eagle next. The results are less helpful, and I hardly save any. I think Falcon might be better. These produce the best results by far. I think this might be the closest. Hey, can I look at myself in the camera? D just so I can compare. I close out the browser and open the camera app. I set it to selfie mode and Gavin leans over. He peers down at the camera to see his new face for the first time. Oh, jeez. His head darts back and forth as he tries to take in his full visage. It's cute how bird-like and sharp mo- how, It's cute how bird-like and sharp his motions are. Wow, this is nuts. I think I might be the closest to one of those first pictures. Go back to that tab. I stomp on the home, I, home button if, uh, to open a different app. This time I head for the files icon. Uh, oh, I thought you just go back to the browser. Yeah, but I saved them. I don't remember if we kept that tab open. Well, you could still type in the... Gavin, it's hard to type like this, okay? I'm the one using the phone. You be a good little birdie and let me use it how I like, okay? His mouth hangs open. Jeez, guys can be so picky about not doing every little thing their way. Yeah, probably because he's got some pictures on his, you know, phone app he doesn't want you to see... Second, y'all. Water time. Open the app to see all the images we just saved. Below that are Japanese language charts and woodblock prints of animals drinking tea, probably from his trials in translating the box. In the corner, mostly obscured by the edge of the frame, is an image that catches my eye. I think I can make out a discarded clothing in it. Something about the color and fidelity of the, sl of the sliver I can see triggers a response. Wait. Oh my gosh, is Gavin worried I'm going to see his porn? I, I chuckle inwardly. Gavin, you dummy, I'm not going to be scared by that. Maybe I'll take a peek and tease him a little. I slide my paw ever so slightly to drag more of the image onto the screen. That's when I see the full image slide into view. Oh. Uh, never mind then. Yeah, I'm going to skip that. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe a little much for you too. Where it finds Gavin on his phone, which eerily mirrors what has happened to her. She confronts Gavin, accusing him of setting this whole situation up, which he denies. Oh. Convinced he turned into a falcon to eat her, she runs out of the apartment? What the fuck? It's my chance to escape Margaret's flight. I hug the wall as I sprint down the hallway. I reach the stairs and leap onto the steps below. Somehow I'm able to withstand the fall, and I need to descend several stories to the lobby. Mercifully, no one walks up the stairway the whole time. Just as mercifully, I only have to wait behind a potted plant in the lobby a moment before someone opens the door and I can skitter outside. I'm out. I'm out on the cold, dark streets by myself. I grab my shoulders and shiver. Shit, what do I do? I need to get back home. Julie can let me in. The way to the, main st the, way to the train station is a simple enough trip, usually. But from this angle, it's impossibly disorienting. It's before I realize I need to stay off the main road. I freak... I forge through the alleys and hedges toward the street-level platform for the train. The platform lights bathe the concrete slab with stark light, but I find a bench to hide underneath. Thankfully, only a few late stragglers dot the platform as a weight braced against a bench leg for the train. A few raindrops strike the ground. A threat of a large downpour. Come on, come on! Any amount of time would feel like an eternity, but eventually the train arrives. I wait for everyone on the platform to board before scampering on just as the doors are about to close. Praying no one sees me, I duck under the seat closest to the door. I press my limbs and tail flat against the wall and wait. No one seems to react, and I slump to the dingy floor. My backside is cushioned by the doll, the doll dress as I pull my knees to my chest. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. I think she is definitely overreacting. I don't think he knew what kind of animal he was going to turn into, but... 
It was really weird that he had that on his phone, but hey, plenty of, we're, we're all into weird things. Anyway, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.